April 11th, 2018. Costa Rica is one of the most beautiful places on earth I've ever been to. I've been around the world and seen a lot of things with my time in the SEAL teams and since. It's hard to be in a place like this with these people and not think back to the others who helped make me who I am today. Guys like Chris Kyle, Mark Lee, Ryan Job, Mike Monsoor, and the rest of Task Unit Bruiser, SEAL Team 3 are always with me. People always ask, what is the hardest part of being a SEAL? Each time I answer, for me, getting out of the teams was the hardest. Being here with Hunting for Healing helps strengthen my bond of brotherhood with other veterans and our bond with our spouses. I want to promote people to honor the relationships they had in the military while strengthening the relationships on the home front. For me, that's what it's all about. Hunting for healing is simple. You know, we, we forge bonds of communication uh, between veterans and spouses through hunting and fishing and outdoor activities. So I met Lindsay in the SEAL teams and afterwards, uh, after a couple of years we got married and a few years after that in 2015 we found ourselves in Africa um, doing some big game hunting. You know, we were out of cell phone reach, um, the computers were you know, turned on only occasionally. We were actually writing our book, The Last Punisher, at that time. Um, but that was an experience and an opportunity to turn the electronics off and then also get out there and, you know, she got to see my passion um, and she really appreciated the, the hunt, not just, you know, the end game, but the hunt. And um, it was important for our relationship. It was something that, you know, really made us stronger. Lindsay's like, you know, I'd love to share this opportunity, this experience with other veterans and their spouses because when I got out of the SEAL teams, I went back to Connecticut. You know, who I found myself closest with was my wife, Lindsay. Um, and she felt that our experiences in Africa would be something to help strengthen the bonds for veterans and their spouses after they get out. You know, what we experience in Africa is something that hopefully that we could take and, and, and add on with Hunting for Healing and make those relationships stronger. Fall of 2001 was a, was a big change, obviously, in this country, and obviously for me personally, having lost a, a close family friend in the Trade Center, and then also knowing people who'd been affected by you know the Pentagon, and the Trade Center, you know I had to refocus and, and look back and see where I was going, and in the immediate future it was nowhere. So I decided to make a change, you know, really invest. Um, in my choices and the choice that I made was to join the Navy. I wanted to join the Navy and become a SEAL um, and take the fight to the enemy because man, I was mad as a lot of people were at that time and you know some people still are uh, and I saw the SEAL teams as that um, you know conduit to get to combat and be able to be a part of a elite fighting force and that's all great you know uh, you know when you're talking about it but you eventually have to do it and it was a huge change from where I was at because I was pretty complacent you know, I wasn't working with all the tools that I had. Um, and when I joined the Navy, I finally got to, you know, put some sweat equity into something and see really what I was made of. And it wasn't just an easy choice. You know, you're competing against, you know, some of the best. Got shipped off to SEAL Team 3 in Coronado, California, and that's where I got my feet wet. Um, early on, went to sniper school, and which paid dividends in my first deployment, and got to really meet that cohort of individuals that, you know, I, you know, I call myself brothers with, and that's, um, you know, obviously Mark Lee and Ryan Joe, Mike Monsoor, uh, Chris Kyle, um, and Johnny Kim, a lot of guys who really shaped who I am today. And our mission at that time, particularly in 2006 in Ramadi, um, was counterinsurgency. And the enemy was unchecked in a lot of different ways. So Ramadi was used as that launching pad in order to help um, break the back of the en the enemy's um, spirit, and then also, uh, you know, to help reestablish dominance in that region in 
western Iraq, Al Anbar province, and help set the stage for a template that could be used not only in the Iraq battle space, but also um, other battle spaces in Afghanistan. But you can't go ahead and whip an ass without taking some licks. And, you know, we had been doing the same mission sets for a while, and August uh, 2nd, 2006 is when we got punched in the face. I remember being in that Bradley right knee to knee with Mark looking at Mark and we're gonna be the first two out and as soon as that door goes down you know you, you know you're getting shot at you can hear it and I take off and I bolt right towards where the door was and assuming everybody was gonna follow suit quickly and I remember running towards the door and noticing that the tank round that was supposed to hit the front door did not it hit the vehicle in front of the house uh, so you have a smoldering vehicle big uh, place of cover and I got that feeling like no one's with me so I slide in you know take a knee and start picking up any threats that are presenting themselves and I'm waiting there which feels like a long time and it's probably only a couple seconds and I get that you know I get that sign from Mark um, you know he's right behind me gives me the tap lets me know he's there and it's time to move on and, and it's that reassuring you know contact uh, in those situations that really turn your mental presentation around and really snap you back into into reality and, and Mark was there with it we end up making entry into the, the building and it's a you know, two-story structure, um, pretty simple layout. I had been through a house just like that a million times before. Um, we start rolling through and guys were picking up you know, different rooms and targets and I made my way to the second deck uh, with, with a buddy of mine and, and as we're rolling up the stairs, Mark picked up my position right by you know, one of the exterior doors and he was holding security for the rest of the platoon as the train you know, moved up to the second deck. Um, I got to the rooftop, cleared it, you know, and as I was making my way down with um, a buddy of mine, at the bottom of the stairs, Mark took effective fire um, from close range and was, was mortally hit. I ran down and grabbed Mark, pulled him behind cover and started triaging. And it happened fast. And what I saw was guys who executed the threat that was at hand because of the training that they had put in, you know, months and years before. And although Mark didn't walk off the battlefield, um, you know, the platoon reacted as the way it should, you know. Mark was a passionate guy, he was a warrior, um, and although Mark wasn't there after August 2nd, 2006, you know, his spirit was, and you take that and you, you add that to your armor, um, you add that to your mindset, um, and you add it to your actions, and you do the best that you can, um, you knowing he's not there, but, you know, one day, you'll see him again. You know, being down in Costa Rica, um, Lindsay and I and Hunting for Healing are very fortunate for the generosity of um, Rusty and Sarah Jane Via, um, Cheryl and Brian Wright to inviting us down here. Um, you know, Rusty and Sarah Jane own Dream Girl Sport Fishing and they wanted to donate something and give something back. And we've been able to come down here and yeah, who, who could ask for a, a better place to, to be? And they have, you know, they have the, the saying here, you know, Pura Vida, you know, the pure life. And it really is the other type of church is out on the water. see that person get back to where they were in the military you know I, I have one of my former buds instructors on the trip and it's cool to see you know him coaching his wife you know through the problem set reeling in the fish and the first one to congratulate um, it's a powerful experience um, and it's that experience that you really won't forget and, and to be with you know Rusty and Sarah Jane and dream girls um, and to be out on the water and to have you know, the person closest to you with you on that trip um, when you catch that fish. It's something you will never forget, I guarantee that. Good memories, good times. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Special Operator First Class, Navy SEAL, Kevin Lace. Everyone at Mossy Oak extends our most heartfelt thank you for your service. We are honored to know you.